Hi, I'm Juliana Suarez. I'm Zoe LaFerre. I'm Poncho the Kid. I'm Catherine King. It's Leo Macariola. Hi, I'm Melissa Rivera, and these, 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 these are songs from Isolation. My track, Ring of Fire, doesn't necessarily have a strong central message to it. Just words I think sound cool together. It's also got this spirit to it that's like, don't necessarily focus on one thing, just have fun with it. I made this song with Jackson Nels and Anthony Poli. And Anthony has a really great presence in the studio, brings out the best ideas in me, and we're comfortable enough with each other that we can say like, hey, that's not a good idea, don't let that be on the track. Jackson makes these great beats and again brings this presence to the studio that's really fun to work with. For me as an artist, I've faced a lot of, let's say, scrutiny. A lot of people that have been like, you know, Ryan, this is really great, this is really funny, but let's go back to the real Ryan. As time has gone on, I've kind of realized Poncho the Kid is the real Ryan. This is the best way to represent the spirit I have as a person. My song, Changes, I feel like was an ode to the expression that everything happens for a reason because it's something that I've believed for so long. I feel like it's just talking about how it's okay to let things go and to move on. The most meaningful part of creating a song would definitely be the process of writing the lyrics. Poetry itself is such an expressive way of showing your feelings and then turning that into music is even more powerful. Music has always been such an important factor in my life and just singing and letting all your feelings go in the form of art. What makes me me would definitely be my dreams and my passions. Without them, I wouldn't be Alyssa and I'd just be normal and who wants to be normal? <laughs> I'm Quinn Olson and I wrote Curse of Youth for the York Album Project. The song is about, I feel like as little kids we're always racing to grow up and wanting to have more responsibility, but I reached a point in my life, as I'm sure a lot of people do, where you don't want to grow up anymore. Coming into freshman year, I was faced with just a lot of confusion and not knowing who my friends are or what I wanted to be or where I just wanted to go with my life. And I felt like a lot of things were just changing around me and I was kind of lost in it all. It came to that point where I didn't really want to grow up anymore and that's why it's called Curse of Youth. Um, obviously I'm past that now, but yes, uh, that was kind of the inspiration for the song. I really hope you enjoy it and please listen to everyone's songs in the York Album Project. We all worked really hard and there's some pretty amazing music on there, so please go listen to it. The inspiration behind my song this is about friends. It's called Rooftop Nights. I wrote the song at the very beginning of quarantine. I really missed my friends because, you know, I was going from seeing them like every day to not seeing them at all. It was one of the first songs that I've written on my own. I'm really glad that I wrote the song and it was a really good learning experience for me. While I do enjoy playing music and writing music, um, I also have a couple other hobbies. I also like to paint. In my room I have art just scattered all over the place. I've always been a pretty creative person and I always like to um, be creative. The fact that I'm able to share that with people, um, especially in songwriting, I'm so grateful for that, that I can share what I do and I love it. Happy was inspired by a breakup um, of mine. I used this song as a way to kind of get out what I was feeling in a way that I could understand. The way I was feeling was confusing to me and I didn't know how to verbalize it and I think music is a really good way to express that. I think the most meaningful part of producing the song and creating it was the actual writing process because I don't consider myself a songwriter. This is the first and only song I've ever written. I didn't really think that I could write songs before this and 
this song, the fact that it is now on an album on Apple Music and Spotify is proof that I can. I try my best to make sure that everybody feels included and wanted. I did struggle with finding a good group of friends and really feeling included at York for quite some time. So I do my best to make sure that people don't feel the way I did. Music, I think, is an incredible way of connecting with people. Enjoy isolation. We all put so much work into this. We like it. The inspiration for my song Teardrops was heartbreak. Whether it be, you know, friendship falling out or relationship breakups, I thought I'd write about more missing memories rather than the person. It's like you miss who they were when you were in the relationship. You miss the good memories of them. And that's what hurts the, mer the most. The most meaningful thing to me about writing this song is getting it out there. Like, people you don't even know can be listening to it and being like, yeah, I relate to that, I've been through that. You know, we're creating an outlet for people who may not have any other way of speaking about how they feel. And music is an amazing way to do that. I started writing music because I was always a therapist to other people. I never really opened up to people. And music was my way to do that. It was just a way to get it off my chest. I had two songs on the York Album Project. Um, the first one being Pain Away and the second one being Curbside featuring my friend Emma Rogers and my other friend Ben LaMonica on guitar. What inspired me to write Pain Away um, was the feelings I had during a past relationship this past year. And for Curbside, at the time, I felt like a lot of my friends were being super fake to me, and I wanted to call that out. The most meaningful part about creating music is that you can really express how you're feeling, and once you have an idea, you can just run with it. What makes me me, I think, is everything that has happened in my life or happened to me. I think that shaped me into the person I am today. Truthfully, I don't believe you can limit someone down to a question of what makes you you. I think you should really get to know that person and get to know their good and bad sides to really see um, who they are. just for like wanting to create something during quarantine. We chose like a bluesy background just because like that's an area that we haven't really explored much before. The most meaningful part I think would be like trying to figure it all out during quarantine. Like we talked on FaceTime a lot and tried to figure out like the best way to proceed with everything. I'm very outgoing and I just love to talk to people. So I'd say that's one of like the biggest things about me that I love and like my love for music. a couple of songs on the album. I played drums on Gray Man, Pig, and Over New York City. I think the most meaningful part of being a part of this whole project was that it was something really special and unique that I got to work on and it was kind of amazing that we got to actually release an album during these circumstances and I'm really proud of it actually. Left in the pouring. My inspiration behind the song I wrote was I was thinking about my future a lot, the future going to college, and I was scared to leave my friends behind. So that's what the song is about. It's about me being scared to grow up without my friends. For me, the most meaningful part of the process of writing music and putting out this album project is collaboration with your friends, sending them the finished product and having them 
give you feedback whether or not they enjoyed it. And then also getting to hear your friends' songs and making friends through the York album project is really fun. Music in general, I think that kind of makes me who I am, but also I'm really into the study of um, mortuary sciences. I think that that's what makes me me is not exactly the weird interests that I do have, but um, that I can embrace the weirdness about who I am. I wrote I Want You To Know because I wanted to explore more deeper lyrics. I wanted to be able to tell a story. I wanted to be able to kind of have a song that people can connect to. When I recorded this song, I recorded my acoustic guitar part and my vocals in my room. It wasn't in a studio or practice room like in past years for past songs. It really challenged me to kind of how can I finish this song. So when I was 12 years old, I heard this song on the radio. It was called Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. That really got me into playing guitar seriously. It wasn't until I got to York where I really started to transform as a musician. I actually uh, tried out for York Live a couple times and I was cut. But finally my senior year when I did play Welcome to Paradise, we performed it and it was a time of my life I will never forget. I'm coming. The inspiration for my song, well, it started out as just a fun piano piece. It was just a demonstration, really, of, of you know, the knowledge that I'm learning about music. I wrote about uh, the seasons, and I personified the seasons as some moody lady who, like, every time she laughs or cries, um, it influences the weather. The most meaningful part of this whole process so far has really just been putting a song out. I haven't really written up until this point, anything that I like, I wanted to put out or I was proud of. It's a fully fleshed out idea, and that's really meaningful to me. I've always wanted to put a song out. And what makes me me is my experience um, as a person. Neither my parents play any instruments or are musical people, really. So I guess finding the passion of music on my own has been um, really special. So my song from the album project is titled Gone, and I wrote it back in the fall during my music production class. For my songwriting process of the song, I first came up with the chords for the verse and the chorus, and I immediately recorded them into Logic on guitar. So I was having trouble writing lyrics for the song, so I, um, for most of my lyrics, I looked back on previous lyrics I've written and compiled those together to fit with the vibe of the song. I used those to write more lyrics and help inspire myself to think of more. After that, I recorded the bridge and I added a lot of layers to the song. The most meaningful thing about the song for me is um, experimenting with uh, mixing and vocal layering and using a ton of effects um, on my tracks. And that was very important to me. My main inspiration for the song was um, sort of to tell myself and the different side of myself that people may, might not see or might not know a lot about, how like I think about myself internally like in my mind versus what other people might think of me. The most meaningful part of making this song in isolation is definitely getting to spend a lot of time on it to focus on the lyrics as much as I could and to perfect the piano part and to change it from when I wrote it three months ago to now and how my ideas sort of changed. A main characteristic of myself was I'm definitely passionate. Like if I like a TV show, I'll be passionate about it or like especially about music, I'm really passionate. I spend as much time on making it as authentic and as real as possible and that isolation definitely helped that. We're allowed to think about ourselves and our music and relate that as passionately as possible to the recordings that we create.
the song that I wrote is called Addicted and basically the inspiration that I got behind it was I had feelings for a person that I really should not have had feelings for. Something that's been really meaningful to me throughout the entire process of recording the song and just the whole I don't know, feel of the whole album project is just how supportive everyone is of each other. I've reached out to some people and some people have reached out to me basically just with help. It's really great to have such a tight community about this. The song that I recorded is on the piano, but I also play guitar and ukulele and I have been singing and performing for as long as I can remember. I'm also a competitive baton twirler and that really just takes over a lot of my life, so my life is mainly baton and music, and I just, I really love it. My inspiration for Rainbow Road was just reflecting on an experience that I had and trying to convey the emotions that I felt during that time. And that was definitely the most meaningful part about this project for me. And just listening to music and writing music in general, and just being able to find the right chords and melodies that express your emotions. <laughs> will go was inspired by um, basically everything that's happened in my high school career um, until the end of sophomore year. It's based on the idea that when you really don't care about something, you really had no um, you know, want for something to happen. When you do get it, you realize, oh my gosh, I needed this this entire time. The longevity that it has, like how, how long can I keep this up um, until, you know, it is not here anymore. The most meaningful part about making This Will Go was definitely just having the time um, and the ability to share it and actually make a full piece of music and complete it. What makes me me are the people that I um, surround myself with and the music I listen to every single day. When I was little, we listened to a lot of musical theater in the car and around the house. Also, um, the new bedroom pop people um, producing from their um, houses made me realize that doing music and recording it and sharing it was more attainable than I thought it would be. What inspired me to make the song was, um, you know, every time going to sleep at night, you know, you see the stars and you just wonder, is there more life out there than we think? Is there more life out there in space? Are there other planets? But it's also inspired by um, one of my favorite bands um, called the B-52s and another one of my favorite bands called Devo. I'm trying to have that cheesy, you know, 50s, 60s uh, sci-fi version. I have a very eclectic taste in music, and I also consider myself as an inventor. I'm inventing new music, new art, uh, stuff like that. But I hope you enjoy um, our album. for making my song was based off of the self-reflection I've made on myself for many years now. This song was a almost warning to people closest to me that if you're going to be in my life, please know what goes on in my head, please know how I truly function, and if that drives you away, then I don't blame you because I'm really not the type of person you want to be with. The best part though about making the song and working on the album project is the fact that I was the only person who could do it. I was the only person that could write those lyrics because it came straight from my heart. It was a confession that I had to make to other people. Out of all the people that will hear my song, maybe one of these people feels the exact same way. What makes me, me, is my constant drive to succeed. It can be good and bad though because I might grow in relationships and be selfish just to get where I need to be. I hope that that part of me is what will help me in the future to not mess up because that's my fear. I have a persistent fear of failure that every single day I'm just trying to overcome. A lot of the 
songs that I've written this year have been kind of impersonal and just haven't really sat well with me. This one song, it just hit me one day. I was like, oh, this this might be good if I recorded it. I think this um, song that I put on the album project, considering that it was the first song I put on the album project, it turned out um, pretty well thanks to the help I received from so many people. It's really nice that people at our school, just we have this great community where people are willing to help each other and back each other up so that we can all create music and live in an environment where we're all supportive of each other. So my song on the album project was called Firestarter. The inspiration for that came from actually uh, a tattoo I saw a couple of years ago. That tattoo was uh, May the Bridges I Burn Light the Way, which I ended up using as the chorus for the song. And I just, I really like that sentiment of making something beautiful out of something that's not such a great experience for a lot of people because everyone has those relationships, friendships, wherever, where they have to burn the bridge and walk away. With writing music, I'm very obviously not a singer. I still very much enjoy the process of writing music, of playing music, of trying to sing. I write music to express the things that aren't always easy to put into the right words. I'm trying to express things musically that otherwise I would have no, absolutely no idea how to say. I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy. Enjoy isolation. We all put so much work into this. I hope you like the whole album and definitely listen to everyone else's songs. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>